Hello and welcome to Cambridge for Kids History Podcasts with me, Matthew Brooks. I'm an archaeologist and I love history. And in these podcasts, I would like to share my knowledge and discoveries with you. This is episode three of the When Dinosaurs Roamed the Earth series. In this episode, we take a look at some dinosaur oddities. These strange and wondrous creatures had some very unusual features that baffle scientists to this day. Together, we will learn about the dinosaur's physiology, why Rhinorex was known as the Nose King, and a certain dinosaur that essentially was a walking vacuum cleaner. Ready? Let's go. Some dinosaurs were huge, tremendously aggressive predators, while others were gentle herbivores or plant eaters that reached a colossal size. The word dinosaur comes from two Greek words meaning terrible lizard, thought to be lizard-like in form and biology. Paleontologists had always thought that the different sizes among dinosaurs were similar to modern animals we see today. But new findings shed light on the differences in life and in the age of the dinosaurs and life today. The biology of dinosaurs explains why there were more giant species amongst these ancient animals compared to modern animals. Researchers say that dinosaurs were not only the biggest animals to wander the earth, but they also had a superior number of larger species, parallel to all other animals, that have a backbone, which we label vertebrae animals. Their conclusions gave us answers on how different life was on earth during the age of the dinosaurs. Even with the occurrence of enormous dinosaurs in the fossil record, many researchers had expected that they simply came into the same range of small and large species that modern animals do today. Turns out, nope. They really were tons and tons of big guys out there, and not many little ones, said a scientist working on this issue. They found that dinosaurs follow a different arrangement of body size, as seen in other vertebrae species. For example, within living mammals, we will find much fewer larger species, such as hippos, compared to smaller animals, such as mice, which have many species. The evidence we now find from a fossil record suggests that there were many species of larger dinosaur and fewer smaller species. So why did they get so big? The answers are found in their biology and evolution. Dinosaurs produced a large number of offspring, which were instantly exposed to predators due to their smaller size. So evolution levelled the playing field. The helpless plant-eating herbivores would grow to a great size as quickly as possible to escape this danger. But the meat-eating carnivores had enough prey to live normally at smaller sizes without going hungry. So carnivore offspring would start on smaller animals before trying to eat larger ones. In fact, we see modern crocodiles following this pattern. Baby crocodiles start by feeding off bugs and small frogs before moving on to fish and then larger mammals such as gazelles. In terms of size, the largest mammal ever recorded is the blue whale, weighing around 150 tonnes and growing to a length of more than 30 metres. But growing conditions are different in the ocean than on land. Today, the largest animal is the elephant, but dinosaurs that lived 250 million to 65 million years ago were more gigantic than modern elephants, hippopotamuses or rhinoceroses. The largest dinosaurs during this age were seropods, a group of four-legged herbivore species that had long necks and tails. A seropod group called Titanosauria had the biggest seropods. Titanosaurs existed at the end of Earth's Cretaceous period from 140 million to 66 million years ago, and titanosaur fossils have been found on every continent. 
One of the largest titanosaurs was Dreadnoughtus. What a name! It had a total length of approximately 26 metres and weighed about 65 tonnes. Another huge dinosaur was Argentinosaurus. Although no complete skeletons have been found, guesses of the dinosaur's body length using existing fossils found indicates it ranged from 37 to 40 metres and it was believed to have weighed 99 to 110 tonnes. By these measurements, Argentinosaurus was the biggest dinosaur, as well as the largest land animal to have walked the earth. The smallest dinosaurs were just slightly larger than a chicken. Microceratops is the smallest known species to date, only weighing around five pounds, standing at just a foot and a half and it walked on two legs. Because Microceratops was so small, it was preyed upon by larger mammals and didn't stand much of a chance. Microraptor is generally acknowledged for being the smallest raptor or bird to live in the age of the dinosaurs. With four wings, the Microraptor weighed just two pounds and was just around two feet long. This raptor mainly ate all manner of insects and lived during the Cretaceous period. As modern birds are descended from the dinosaurs, then the smallest dinosaur today would be the hummingbird. Steven Spielberg may have given us a good view into the amazing realm of dinosaurs with his movie Jurassic Park, but there are quite a few weird and wonderful dinosaurs that existed. The Nigosaurus, that lived over a hundred million years ago, was an elephant-sized animal that lived in Africa. It was a herbivore, had a superb show of teeth, ten rows to be precise, and a mouth shaped like a spade, which experts believed was used to suck up its food. Essentially, this dinosaur was a living vacuum cleaner. Sometimes evolution doesn't always get it right as shown by Carnotaurus, which was discovered in Argentina. It was an extremely weird looking dinosaur. This creature had two horns on top of its head with tiny arms, much smaller than a T-Rex. But stranger still, its hands were backwards, meaning its right hand was where its left hand should have been, and vice versa. Rhinorex which is better known by experts as Nose King, was equipped with a huge, fleshy, bulging nose, which it used to signal warnings to other members of the group with loud booms and blasts. Imagine blowing your nose when you got scared, or to call for help, you might get some odd looks. Hopefully today you have enjoyed this episode and learnt something new. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. Tune in next time with your host, me, Matthew Brooks, for more time travelling. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great day. Are you looking for high quality, family friendly podcasts? Shows that are safe for younger or more sensitive listeners? Podicon Go is a reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy. From educational programs to conversational topics and incredible storytelling and role-playing shows in a variety of styles, themes, and age groups. Podicon Go is a group of independent podcast creators dedicated to creating high-quality programs that provide family fun for everyone. Visit PodiconGo.com for an ever-growing lineup of shows complete with descriptions and ways you can listen. Connect with the Podicon Go Family Friendly Podcast Network on Facebook and Twitter. P O D I C O N. Go! It's podcast fun for everyone. Podicon Go!